Good morning, scholars, and good morning, Mr. Ritz. If you can dream it, you can do it. Faith and integrity, lifelong learners, global leaders, Servium changes lives, and I am delighted to be with you here today to be creating a better world. Long ago in a galaxy far, far away, that is actually a field of lettuce that I've grown with my students, and we are the people who go from can't and won't to must and done daily, and we do it with a smile. I'm the teacher who takes classrooms and turns them from this to this, and have been innovating with all kinds of growing technologies with students all around the world. So all of us, we are foodies, we are farmers, we are solutionaries, we are passionate people, community leaders. Our goal is to nourish the world. So we are not nerds, no we are not, we are superheroes and today I salute you. And while other people talk, 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 this group and all of us, we make epic happen. Teachers change lives. And today, I salute you. We understand the power of me, the power of machines, the power of many, and the power of flow that image, growth, collaboration, and best practices take facilities that look like this and turn them into this. That service, supply, collaboration has benefits of human capital and opportunities that literally change the world right here on the rooftop in the South Bronx. That's me, <laughs> excuse me, my wife and daughter, literally right across the street from one of our schools, growing plants on rooftops. And literally, this is the work that we do. Collectively, teachers, they lift, they pull, they engineer. And if you can dream it, you can do it. Servium changes lives. And today, I salute each and every one of you, literally together, we are creating a bigger, brighter, better, healthier world. So I come to you today live from the Bronx, home to the cheese hat, right here from my classroom. Literally a little context about where we live. 45 buildings that look like this in the poorest congressional district in America. No supermarkets, no stores. We are geographically and economically isolated. Imagine 45,000 people in eight square blocks, tall buildings with no access. So simply put, I'm not willing to accept the things I can't change. I'm going to change what I can't accept. And for me, it all starts with seeds. Yes, I am a farmer, a seed spreader and a peace promoter. And my superpower simply is I grow food with children. A little bit about the work that we do can be seen right here. This is our skyline. These are our shops, <laughs> our supermarkets, our windows, our doors, our homes, and our yards in the poorest congressional district in America. This is our soil. Here, we are growing something greater for children who love to learn, to make, to nurture and to taste. This is Green Bronx Machine. Literally, I come to you live and this is what I do with adorable students. I grow food in a 110 year old building, four stories up using 90% less water and 90% less space. And we put the art and science of growing food at the heart of our pedagogy here in school. We grow it, we measure it, we serve it, we cook it. We sell, sell it, we create recipes. We actually, we grow pickles and cucumbers. We process our food. That's the White House chef. Literally, this is me with my classroom behind us in a pre-COVID photo. At the heart of our work is the Green Bronx Machine Classroom Curriculum. It's available for all of you. It is 300 pages of science, math, social studies, language arts, computer science, art, cooking, homework, projects, exams and literally puts the garden and project-based learning right in the center of your classroom. It has a website. It has access to me, Common Core, Next Generation Science Center, D21, and is aligned to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. It's also aligned to IB. Along the way, we've moved targeted attendance from 40% to 93% daily. We've had year after year of 100% graduation rates. And we've moved test scores, particularly for English language learners and special needs 
45% increase in passing rate year over year. Our students have made the cover of Time Magazine for Children, a school that was once failing and slated to be closed is now proficient and well-developed. But 150,000 pounds of vegetables later, my favorite crop is organically grown citizens, graduates, members of the middle class, children who are eating and growing their way to a better, brighter future and a cleaner, healthier community. We take over buildings and turn them from this literally to this in ways that benefit the environment, our students, and the world overall. You see, I want every child to know what food is. I want every child to grow food, know what it is, what it looks like, where it comes from, understanding the relationship. For me, putting school, food in school is the most important thing we can do. We have intergenerational, interracial, and intercultural programs that teach children how to be on both sides of the entrepreneurial table and food production table. And literally, when you grow food, you grow justice because food justice is racial justice and every child deserves a perfect plate of food. And let me be clear, the most important school supply in the world is food. We can't teach children who are hungry and malnourished. We can't teach children who are hopped up on sugar and caffeine. And along the way, my students take over lots from this and turn them into this, from a movement to a market that builds value for all, or as I like to say, a si se puede moment. Because if you can dream it, you can do it. Because for me and for us in the South Bronx, where we have everything to gain and nothing to lose, business as usual is no longer an option. To think that there are more people eating themselves to death around the world then are hungry and that both sides of that coin have to relate to food access is critical, critical. And the bottom line is this, food sells. If you put fresh, healthy food in communities, my students and I show up and sell it and move it. People relish it. We're using all kinds of innovation to grow something greater. We take in abandoned buildings and turning them into food production facilities, creating jobs and food access. And literally, like the bag says, get out there and just do it. So I have a lot of energy. I hope you're plugging in because my motto is simple. It's called cultivate, propagate, and replicate. I want to show you five days in the life of a seed. One, two, three, four, five. How awesome sauce. I want to show you five days in the life of green browse machine. We show up, we measure, we build. That's five days old seedlings. 25 days later, that's a whole lot of lettuce or cabbage in our pockets. We are browns proud and we are farming and you know it. My students and I have taken over lots and gone from this to this. We've taken over facilities and gone from this to this. We've taken over rooftops and gone from this to this. And again, green communities around the world. That is the work that we do. No building should look like this. And we can turn those windows into an opportunity to grow food and awareness for all. So from communities in the Bronx to all around the world, I am on a mission to grow something greater. And I ask you all to join with me because it all starts with schools and it all starts with children. And I'm proud to be growing something greater. All it takes is a willing teacher and some seeds and literally a classroom. We can grow food 365 days a year using 90% less water. 90% less space. And look at the community. We take over empty big box real estate and convert empty stores using the same graduates and technology and training that the kids learn in school to create food factories, multi-million dollar facilities that grow custom food for custom chefs. And the results and the beauty speaks to themselves. That's what we need. I'm proud that Green Bronze Machine has built the first wheelchair accessible farm and commercial training kitchen. And even in the middle of the mountains of Appalachia, we have solar powered greenhouses that we built to have foster care youth and disconnected youth grow food, create jobs, and literally grow something greater. Take a look. Hi everybody, Steve Ritz here in the heart of Appalachia in the first commercial greenhouse maintained by foster care children in America. 
on these tower gardens. We've got lettuce, basil, peppers, romaine, squash, cucumbers, dill, basil, tomato. We're growing and while everything. It's, night, it's freezing outside, believe it or not, they're growing food inside. After we built the farm, we started building the children tiny homes. The first home that these children could call their own in their lives. And we were proud to ribbon cut. And for us, it's so much better than fast food. 2,200 living wage jobs later, my students are dreamers, believers, and achievers, and yours can be too. We have grown from disruption to delivery with 100% teacher satisfaction with programming all around the world. Because for me, it is just easier to raise healthy children than fix broken men. And if you can dream it, you can do it. And that's when I had a really big idea to take this curriculum and grow, go it and grow it global. We translated it immediately first off into Arabic, literally taking our curriculum and converting it into Arabic. We started sharing it on the internet way before COVID and through the power of the cheese out of the computer, we're able to connect children all around the world to grow something greater. Here in the Gulf, we are growing students. Look at that, the biggest cabbage I've ever grown. We're growing strawberries four stories up in the middle of the Bronx in the middle of winter. Across the Gulf, we've got farms. Children are growing food. We are creating food sovereignty and closer to home here in the Bronx. We are taking over abandoned streets and turning them into farms where children can work, see butterflies, learn about bees, do service, collect rainwater and most importantly, grow happy, healthy food and career opportunities. I like to say it's a bed that we can all lay in. And then COVID happened. And for those of you who have experienced COVID and I know how it has ravaged so many of our lives, I feel you and I feel your pain and I thank you for your strength. Here in the Bronx, in this very zip code, these towers that are outside became the death test spot. Bronx residents were twice as, as likely to die from COVID in New York City than anywhere else. The garbage stopped getting picked up, parks closed, streets were shut down, and there was no food. Literally, with restaurants and supermarkets and stores closed, there was no food. Instantly, I had an idea and that was to find food that was being grown all around the country and bring it directly to us. And literally, we turned the basement of our school into a supermarket, my wife and I, and started buying fresh food from all around the country and shipping it and delivering it and putting it outside daily for our students and our community to grow food. We put pop-up vegetable stands everywhere. We created delivery systems. We relied on our network, making it our net worth to grow something greater and literally put pop-up stands everywhere. We turned our schoolyard into a supermarket and we're able to send home parents and children with books, school supplies, and most importantly, the food that they need to nourish themselves and their community. Literally growing something greater, putting unity back into our community. We even set up a wheelchair delivery service. As winter became spring, my students and I started growing seedlings. We didn't grow hundreds, we didn't grow thousands, we grew tens of thousands and started delivering them across New York City, literally creating farms everywhere. And the first thing we did is we got our children, that's my family, and we got our children out of those big buildings outside so they could breathe air, reconnect with nature, have community service, and literally started doing community service all across the Bronx to grow something greater. And this is what we grew. Beautiful, happy children, lots of flowers, happy neighbors, community, lots of edible food. We even put solar panels in our gardens so that gardens can become the new hotspots for internet connectivity. As summer moved into fall, we realized we still needed to grow food. So we started looking into classrooms and basements and literally started creating underground farms that look exactly like this. Literally building farms underground in one day that had 2,200 plant ports, literally in a sealed room with LED lighting. And wouldn't you know, 60 days later, 
wow, it was raining tomatoes right in the basement of New York City. School didn't open and like so many of you, we had to continue going remote. And I turned my home and my living room into my classroom and literally brought in my garden, my puppets, my farms, my favorite books. The one thing we did different is we brought in a chef and I would teach school and we would have a chef teach children how to cook with the very groceries we had delivered either to the school or to their home the day before. And first we had 10 children online. Those 10 brought another 10. Those 10 brought another 10. And before you knew it, we had thousands of people cooking online with us and literally started thinking about how we could grow food. Schools didn't open and we wanted to start connecting children with online virtual learning experiences and created all sorts of characters that the children became and literally launched a TV show to bring our children and learning all around the world. And we called it Let's Learn with Mr. Ritz. Welcome to my class, students. Hi, Mr. Ritz. Hello, Mr. Ritz. Ahoy, Mr. Ritz. Hi, Mr. Ritz. Hi, Mr. Met. Jason Latimer, the world champion of magic. I wonder, what is a seed? Are there any dinosaurs living today? Why doesn't the big blue whale have any gills? What are those two moose doing? I have so many more questions. Let's go! Whoa, where are we? Big Blue is the length of three whole school buses or one basketball court. That's so cool! This titanosaur is 122 and feet one big long. Can you imagine a tree that big? Leslie, are you home? Big word alert! Step right, step left! I'm doing it, Mr. Mac. I'm doing it! So the students. show took off. I hope you watch it with your students. I hope to come to the Philippines and, and actually film an episode with you. And believe it or not, the show had 2 million views with children in school. And just when we thought we were turning the corner and I got people to watch the show, there's the link for you. So please watch the show and share and let us know if you like it. The most horrible thing happened. George... Floyd. Just when we thought it couldn't get worse, it did. And I want to talk about it because in my classroom, Black lives matter, Asian lives matter, and it is important for all of us to come together, to say their names, to remember the pain, to take this tragic moment and turn it into a movement that galvanizes my community, your community on the world and the world to fight today for a better tomorrow for all of us. Because to see what is right and not do it is a lack of courage. So we were proud to paint the streets in our community, Black Lives Matter, and I urge all of you to get behind fighting racism. And not only ethnic racism, environmental racism, social racism, and economic racism. And the beauty of plants and growing plants with children is that plants work hard for everybody and the planet, their equal opportunity. So instead of desperately seeking the light at the end of the tunnel, I urge all of my teachers and colleagues to be the light inside of our tunnel. Let your classrooms be beacons of hope, beacons of opportunity, and illuminate the way for our children and our colleagues. And I'm proud to say that this is the work that Green Bronx Machine did in our community, not some days, but every day, making sure every child and every member was nourished because if you can dream it, you can do it. I'm so proud in 2021, the Green Bronx Machine did the following. We were the social impact award winners according to Classy for 2021. And I couldn't be more proud. And if I can, you can. Let compassion be the new curriculum. And I'm so proud that Green Bronx Machine was named uh, building the nation of problem solvers by the National Council for Science and the Environment because diversity is a fact, my friends. Equity is a choice. Inclusion is an action. Belonging is an outcome. And we all yearn to belong. And for me, Green Bronx Machine is for life. So get with the program. And that's why I scream education, not asphyxiation, because it's a moral responsibility 
to breathe life into everything that we do. And even though schools were closed in 2020 and for part of 2021, I'm proud that Green Browns Machine was named a global showcase school. Literally a community that was struggling to survive, has embraced green initiatives and has moved from surviving to thriving. This is not Photoshop. This is 24 days on a farm, rooftop using 90% less water. And while people say money doesn't grow on trees, I've met children who are allergic to vegetables, but nobody is allergic to money. And growing food is a license to print money. And that's literally what these students do. It's our obligation. That's beautiful lettuce. This is children working harder. And I mean, smarter. We're not working harder. We're working smarter. And to think that my students and I have created a whole new recipe for success is absolutely awesome sauce. Collectively, we are ordinary people living extraordinary lives. And it's our jobs as parents, as educators, as aunties and uncles and grandparents to steward and shepherd our children to a better, brighter future. And this is the excitement that they see when they get to grow food in class. The participation of growing something greater. As little Julian says, it's about a growth mindset. And this work transcends everything that we're capable of doing with children in school. So doing your best in this moment puts you in the best place for the next moment. And our rising tide lifts all boats. I'll keep carrying this message around the world because it's the industry's job to grow the perfect head of lettuce, but my job to grow the perfect head for that lettuce. Appetite, markets, employees, and innovation. Think about this, design, build, and transform social sustainability and living wages truly at the heart of innovation. And that's what the work that we do here at Green Bronze Machine is all about so that together we can all prosper. To think that my students and I are on the cusp of net positive food and net positive energy and can transform urban environments to generate food and opportunity has captured the like of President Clinton. And to think that I was able to meet President Clinton and be named as a top 10 finalist in the Global Teacher Prize is proof that passion, purpose, hope, and commitment can get each and every one of us through the door. My life has also gone from impossible to I'm possible because 10 years ago, that big heavy guy on the screen was me. I was over 300 pounds and I simply started listening to the words of Mrs. Obama and eating the food that I grew with children in class. And literally, I brought back sexy. I lost 110 pounds and became a champion of change, bringing my students to the White House. And actually having the president invite us to the White House and letting me install a farm both inside and outside of the White House, where I was proud to debut my book and share all kinds of things with President, and ultimately got to meet my idol, Mrs. Obama, which was awesome sauce. Along the way, Green Bronx Machine has won the top wellness award in New York City. We have an Emmy Award show, episode 808 of Growing a Greener World. I ask you all to watch it. We've become identified as a top 10 health and wellness program in the nation. And remarkably, for three years in a row, we've been a top 100 educational program in the world. We have gone from hope to His Holiness the Pope. And yes, I was invited to meet Pope Francis and share my story with him. And my story is your story. It is a si se puede, past does not equal the future story. For those of you who know the legacy of the South Bronx, this is the community I was a part of. These are the streets that I walked on as a young man. And to think that I'm now using 90% less water to grow food in this very community and have overcome obstacles such as these is proof that this memory is nothing more than a photo on the wall. And my class and my students have gone on to success and success and success. It's one big show and tell. We've even put a model of our classroom in the U.S. Botanic Gardens. So where am I going next? Who knows? But I love to do it with my cheese hat. And remarkably, through Global Teacher Prize, I found myself in the middle of the desert. And we had a vision to create the first sustainable city in the world. And this is not a virtual image. This is the real deal. Inside those biodomes, we are growing food. 
It is two degrees cooler there than anywhere else in the UAE. And we are growing 1 million plants per month with students in school. Literally the first net power positive solar powered school in the world, which has gone on to win award after award after award. So for all my colleagues, I urge you to define and set your goals. Learn from mistakes. Don't be afraid to fail. Keep motivated and stay the course. This, I tell my students each and every day that they are my little princes and my little princesses. And when I was a little boy, The Little Prince was my favorite book. And the beautiful thing is that our students are all little princes and princesses. And this is a video filmed by a fourth grader in my classroom showing how you can work anywhere and how the beauty of life can unfold daily in a classroom for your eyes, for your students' eyes, that we can see to flourish ourselves, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our life, grow healthy food, share healthy food. do it with a cheese hat and a bow tie is awesome sauce. So no one can do everything, but everyone can do something. And that's my call to action to all of you, because you don't have to be great to start. I'm still not a good farmer, but you have to start in order to be great. I'm proud to have been named a life changer. And that Green Bronx machine was named an industry disruptor, because for us, it is easier to raise healthy children than fix broken men. And that's the work that we do collectively. It's our obligation to make sure every child and every adult has an equal seat at the table. And in a world where big fish eat the little fish, I want the little fish to swim together and outschool the big fish. So I believe there is good in the world. And I know we are gathered here today because you, all of you, are the good in the world. And I want to thank you for your hard work because we start from a place of truth. We keep it good. We make it just and well-ordered. We make it beautiful. We make it sustainable. We make it prosperous. And that's how we heal the world. Because I want all of you to think boundlessly, work purposefully, and live passionately because every one of us has the power for greatness, not for fame, but for greatness, because greatness is determined by service. And that's what Serbium is all about. Si se puede. So there are those who look at things and the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and say, why not? And I want to know what will you do to make Epic happen? I, like all of you, I fight. I fight for children. I fight for children who were born in places that most people would not want to be caught dead in. I fight for children who don't have a room to call their own. Like you, I fight for children who don't know what dessert is and often don't get dinner. I fight for children whose monsters are real and together we are growing something greater. And each and every day right here in the South Bronx, I plant seeds, I grow children, I plant rainbows and we celebrate and teachers and colleagues and administrators, I want to leave you with this thought. You will teach them to fly, but they will not fly your flight. You will teach them to dream, but they will not live our dreams. We can teach them to live, but they will not live our lives. But in every flight, in every life, in every dream, The print of the way you taught them will always remain. And that is the work that we do. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. And if you can dream it, you can do it because we are Servium. I thank you so much for joining me here today because happiness is a journey. It's not a destination. And I'm so excited to be here with you today because communities are not born, they are made. And together we are growing a community. Everything we do is for the community. So I'll keep planting seeds and promoting peace. I'll keep teaching children. And literally I am creating a movement and urging all of you around the world to join me. 
If it's up to me, I'll put farms everywhere. And to think that I got a camel to wear my cheese hat, and now you can travel Emirates Airlines and learn about the work that I'm doing on in-flight entertainment with my students is proof that anything is possible and that together we are stronger. It's my goal to build the world's biggest global network, hundreds and thousands of teachers dedicated to growing something greater. But it all starts with one, because my mentor taught me how you treat the one reveals how you regard the many, because everyone is ultimately a one. So remember that in all that you do with your children, one at a time, two at a time, three at a time. Together, we are here to grow something greater and have food at the heart of all that we do. I'm so excited to have written a children's book, teaching children how to make it happen so I can share my passion, purpose, and hope with them and take this story around the world, even to those who don't want to learn, because that's the important work that we do. And remember, how we walk with the wounded speaks louder than how we sit with the great. I urge each and every one of you to do something today that you and your future self will thank you for. The past does not equal the future. You should never, ever, ever give up. My name is Steve Ritz. I've got passion for my plants and I'm not afraid to show it. My name is Steve Ritz. I'm a community advocator and I am determined to grow it, grow it, grow it. Please check out a copy of my book, The Power of a Plant. Watch our TV show. And remember, if you can dream it, you can do it. I've given you a great toolbox here today. There are great resources for all of you at the Green Bronx Machine website. And of course, at our YouTube channel where you can watch everything and see all of our videos and learn more. And my goal to ask you is what will you do to make Epic happen? See you next time, Thanks students. kindly. You can follow me here. And thanks so much for your time today. My name is Steve Ritz. Thank you. So long.